Hey, what's going on guys? Cole with Kojo, welcome back. And in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about IV designables. Um, this is something in UI kit and in, well, in the UI kit framework as a whole that I feel like is super underrepresented. People don't really understand how to use them. And I feel like if people did understand how to use them, it could solve a lot of the problems that people have with custom UI views and storyboards and all the, like really storyboards are the biggest thing. A lot of people complain about storyboards and say that, you know, they're hard to maintain, especially if you're on a team and you have a bunch of merge conflicts and yada, yada, yada. Well, IB designables don't exactly solve that, but creating custom components do and using IB designables is a way to make the storyboards look really good. And basically, if the goal of you having a storyboard is to have something that's really nice to look at and that the whole team can view to kind of get an understanding of the you know project structure, IB designables can definitely help you do that because you can create a custom component and you can have it display very nicely in the storyboard. And not only that, but there's some uh, functionality that I'm gonna show you where inside of your custom view, you can override a function called prepare for interface builder and you can write some logic that will be executed when the storyboard is rendered so that you can get whatever custom look you want. So um, without me rambling too much, let me just kind of go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. It's actually not that hard to set these up. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. Uh, I'm here on Dribble right now, and I like to come to Dribble for inspiration or whatever. And I'm just gonna pick a uh, really simple component here to build with the uh, custom UI view and IV designable. Uh, and I like this one right here. This is just really simple. It just gives us something real easy to, to build on. So it's gonna be this little view right here with an image, uh, a title, and a little sub-label down here. So um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump in Xcode and we'll create a new Xcode project. It's just gonna be a single view app. Um, we'll call it Design Away. And uh, make sure you've got the language set to Swift and the user interface set to Storyboards. And we'll go ahead and drop that right here. And by the way, I just wanted to mention, I know that I'm making a video here about IV designables, um, which obviously does relate to storyboards and UI kit. And I know that Swift UI is out now. So a lot of people might be wondering why I'm not doing a video on Swift UI. Well, I will do some content on Swift UI. I just think that UI kit is still very present in the iOS world. Uh, there's still a lot of companies using it. And honestly, pro pro projects are gonna use it for several years. Uh, following now, I mean, there's still companies using Objective-C. So there's, this is still a really useful skill to have. And who knows, like maybe after you watch this, if you're already working on a project, then, um, or maybe you found this video because you want to know how to use these better anyway, it, it'll definitely help. And especially even if you're a new dev, I wouldn't walk away. I would definitely, definitely watch this video um, because this is going to be a really cool skill that a lot of people don't know about. I feel like it would easily, you know, impress some senior devs or managers or whatever, if you know how to use these. And you can help structure your team a little bit better and get rid of all those conflicts that everybody's having. So uh, anyways, um, let's go ahead and, you know what, we don't even really need to do anything in the storyboard yet. Let's go ahead and just create a new group and we're gonna call it components. And this is where we're going to create our uh, IB designable view. But before I do that, I wanna clean up the structure a little bit. I'm gonna create a folder called application. I'm gonna drop my delegates, my app and scene delegate in there. And I'm also gonna create a folder for interfaces and I'm gonna drop the uh, two storyboards in there. And that's fine for now. I don't wanna go crazy with all of the restructuring. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create one more group inside the components folder and I'm gonna call this, uh, we'll call it card view because that's kind of what it looks like to me. It's like a little card kind of. Um, so we're gonna make this really easy. I'm gonna create a zip and uh, we're gonna put the view in there and then I'll create a UI view subclass that's going to uh, actually hold the logic for that and have the class. So uh, first let's start by creating a new file. We're gonna create a view and we'll call it card view. And in here we've got, if you haven't used these much before, um, you'll notice that we're seeing what looks kind of like a view controller here, but we don't really want it to be a view controller. We want it to be more like a, just a regular view. So we're gonna change the size to freeform. That way we can move it around a little bit. Um, and then we are going to get rid of the top bar, get rid of the bottom bar. 
And for some reason, some of you might still see this little, I know it was here just on my screen, my video cut out for a sec, um, and I had already fixed it. But yeah, if you have this little black bar down here, just go ahead and come down here and change the device to literally anything else. And you can even go back and the bar will go away. It's just a little Xcode bug where even though you got rid of the bottom bar, it stays there for a second. So um, anyways, now that we got that gone, we can go ahead and create the view. Um, so I'm going to add a... Uh, not a UI view. I'm going to add an image view and I'm going to pin this 0, 0, 0 and I'm going to give it an aspect ratio because it kind of looks like we've got like a box right here so it's like a one by one aspect ratio. So I'll give that aspect ratio constraint, come here and change it to one to one. So that's kind of looking closer to this right here. And then we've just got two basic labels. So uh, we'll create one label and two labels and we're gonna pin this one uh, it looks like it's about mm, we'll go like five from the top or so doesn't have to be perfect the purpose of this is obviously not the um, isn't the design it's more just the IB designable and uh, custom UI view thing so um, anyways we'll go ten from the top of that for the next label or from the bottom sorry and then five from the left five from the right and that's looking good. So now we will change this text to, I'm gonna go ahead and make it look like this one. So uh, design thinking, and we'll change the bottom one to, uh, it says 19 course. I'm just gonna put courses. And just so we've got it looking a little bit more like this, looks like this font size is a little bit smaller. That's a little blue, that's a little gray. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change this to dark gray. I'm going to knock the font size down to uh, 13 looks good. And then for this top label, we're going to make this black and we'll make it 16 or so. And that's looking a lot closer to this. So then we'll shrink this down a little bit. So that's kind of looking a lot like what we're going for. So um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is I'm going to bring this uh, well, we'll just get some random image from, I'm going to go to pixels.com. This is a great website if you don't know about it, where you can just get free artwork that is uh, royalty free. So uh, I like using this. So we're just going to look up person and we'll take this guy right here. I see this guy all over the internet. A lot of people use this picture for stuff. So we'll download the small one and I'm going to bring that into Xcode. Oh, whoops. Oh man, what am I doing here? Need to bring this over here. Uh, okay, so now we'll open up the assets folder here and we'll drag our image in. And then I'm gonna just rename it guy. And then we'll change the UI image view image here to guy. Whoops. Boom, there we go. And then we'll change it to aspect fill because that's kind of what it looks like over there. Okay, so now we're looking a lot closer to this. It's starting to look a lot like what we're going for. So there's not a whole lot more to this. Let's just go ahead and create one more file. Uh, it's going to be a Swift file. And we're going to call it card view as well. And we're going to create a class and so we're going to call it card view. And it's going to be a subclass of UI view. I need to import UI kit though so that we get access to UI view. And then in here, we need to override two initializers for the UI view class. And I'll explain what they are. The first one is this init with frame. So we're going to do the init with frame. And we're going to call super dot init, making sure that we call the same super initializer, pass in that frame. And then the other initializer that we're going to want to do is the required initializer. So if you just start typing required, you can tap enter. And then we also need to call the super for this one. Now the reason that we need two different initializers, some people don't understand why we need this. The reason is because in UIKit with UI views, this is the initializer that gets called for um, uh, whenever you initialize this class in code. And this is the initializer that gets called when you initialize this class in a storyboard. So you have to have both of these. That's why we have this required keyword here, making sure that we adopt both of them. Um, so now that we have that, what we're going to want to do is create what, what I'm going to call a common initializer. It'll be a private function. We're going to call it common init. 
And we're going to call the common initializer in each of the required initializers. That way we can write some logic here and we can make sure that this is always done in one of the two initializers. So now that we have that inside here, uh, actually before we go any further, let's go back to the zip file. Let's click this files owner item up here and we're going to change the class to that card view class that we just created. Now if I come over here, I open the assistant editor, we should get our card view class over here. Now take your root view, we're going to hold control, drag into our class, and we're going to just call this view. So now we have access to this view. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add another function down here. Uh, I'm just going to paste this here, but I'll walk through what it means and um, you can go ahead and copy this down. Uh, I use this pretty much to make things a little bit simpler in all of my projects. Whenever I'm creating uh, UI view subclasses, I always have this function in them. And actually what I usually do is create like a base class for all of my um, UI view subclasses and I just put this in there. But anyways, for now, that's not the point of this. We're just gonna create this function. And basically this load view from nib function, what this is gonna do is it's gonna get the bundle for this current class, uh, which is you know the bundle of the application. And then we're going to create a nib from the nib name that we pass in, uh, which is going to load from the zip file. So zip files are converted into UI nibs uh, when they're actually like rendered. So then the next thing that we need to do is we need to instantiate a UI view from that nib that we created. So basically, what does this mean? We're going to say view, which is that view IB outlet. We're going to say view equals load view from nib and we're going to pass in the name of the zip file which is card view so now that we have that we're going to say view dot auto resizing mask equals dot flexible width uh, comma dot flexible height and we're going to say view dot frame equals self dot bounds and then we are going to say, what's the last thing? Ah, add sub view view. And that's all there is to it. So I know this is a little bit weird code, but basically uh, we're creating that reference to that view. We're actually loading that view from the nib that's created from the zib. I know that's some confusing terminology there, but yeah, we're just gonna load in that view there. So now the cool thing about this is we can always reference this view property and that's going to reference this view right here. So, um, and then this, this UI view subclass is what holds that view. So if you can imagine here, basically what's going on is we have this class, which is card view, which is just a UI view and it's child view is the view that we created here. And it's, but the cool thing is anytime that we resize the, uh, card view that we create, it's always going to automatically resize that little sub view. So we don't even really think of it as a sub view, honestly, because it, it, I mean, although it is in the view hierarchy, at the end of the day, that's the view. That's what you're going to see. So we can actually kind of see what this looks like. What we're going to do now is we're going to add that IB designable flag. If you haven't seen this, this is what it looks like. Now, if we add this IB designable flag, what's going to happen is if we add it to a view controller or add it into a storyboard, it's going to run this initializer in the storyboard. It's actually going to execute this logic, which is really, really cool. So um, there's really not much more to it. If we go into the storyboard, we add a UI view. Let's go ahead and actually add a stack view first. Oh, now I'm kind of losing them here. Here, let's go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this for a second. So we've got that stack view. Let's go ahead and pin the stack view 20, 20, 20, 20. And then I'm going to add a uh, vertical stack view. I'm actually going to add two of those. That's I'm just doing this just so we can have four of them on screen. Uh, and then inside all of the stack views, I'm going to select all of them. And I'm going to change the distribution to fill equally. Now I'm going to add a UI view to the first stack view. And I'm going to set that class equal to the class that we created, which is card view. And now we're going to see is the storyboard's going to load. It's loading. 
And there we go. We've got our card here that we created in the card view. So now I'm actually going to copy this and paste it. So we've got two right there. And then I'll copy it again and bring it into this other stack view. Cop whoops. Copy it one more time and paste it one more time. So now we've got four of those card views inside of our storyboard. So that's basically the gist of it. If, if you can imagine here, this is going to make it a whole lot easier to maintain your storyboards because now instead of having the stack view and we've got like four image views in the storyboard and like eight different labels, now we can just add four views and we can write all of the other logic inside of the custom view. This is going to make this way more reusable. It's going to make it way easier to maintain your storyboards. Just all around, this is going to make your development life cycle, especially with your team, just a lot better. And like I said, like we've got four and all we had to do is copy and paste. But even if we want one more, we can, or two more, we can just copy that and paste it. And not only is that going to replicate this view over and over and over again in the, in the storyboard, but it's also going to make it easier to use in your actual application because we don't need to go add another set of image views and labels and all that stuff. So, um, one other thing that I'm going to show you in case this is the first time that you're looking at one of these is um, now that we have all this stuff in here, not only can we add the view as an IV outlet, but we can also add our other stuff. So I'm going to bring in this label right here. Uh, it's the, the title label. So that's what I'm going to call it, title label. So now we could technically change the text of this title label if we wanted to. And you could do that in the initializer or in a function or whatever you choose to do. But what I want to show you is that prepare for interface builder function that I was talking about earlier. So if we start typing prepare for interface builder, we can see that it's going to override this function right here. We can actually remove the class keyword. We don't need that. Um, so we're going to override the prepare for interface builder function. And right here, we could just say title label dot text equals, I don't know, hello world. And what you should know about this is this prepare for interface builder function is never going to get called in your actual application. This is a safe place to just write code that you want to show up in the storyboard. So if I go back to the main.storyboard, it's going to load one more time and we're going to see that all of these say hello world because I put that in my interface builder. So really what this allows us to do is have clean UI views, uh, zibs, clean UI view classes. And if we want some dummy text that we can see here, uh, we can do that in the prepare for interface builder. So that's just a really handy tool that you have. So, um, yeah, I mean, I hope this helps out. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, definitely subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, we're just trying to help show the things that I feel like aren't out there enough on the internet. There's not enough videos. There's not enough content about this type of stuff. I feel like most of the people that you're going to see are just going to hate on storyboards. And, um, I don't know, maybe it's controversial, but I think I like storyboards. I just know how to use them really well. I really like auto layout. And at the end of the day, this and storyboards, I mean, they're designed to get logic out of your code. And, you know, some people don't like them and I guess that's fair, but like I said, it's just a tool that you can use. And if you know how to use it well, then it can make your life cycle, your development life cycle better. So um, anyways, again, I hope you liked the video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.